How's everybody doing? Got some old photos to go through here. Rolling Wheels Raceway in Elbridge, the fast track at its heyday back in 2009. This is a, uh, it's either Labor Day was late that year or this was, because uh, I don't remember them running. Well, maybe this was the first weekend after, but this was September 7th. So obviously you would think that the regular season would be done, but uh, this wasn't World Series weekend either. So I'm not really exactly sure what was going on on this particular day, but there is Rolling Wheels Raceway. One of the more iconic tracks in the central New York region, built originally back in 1969, is Jimmy Phelps. And I believe that's Larry White, who's uh, looking the other way at us here. I'm not positive, so don't quote me on that. Billy Dunn and his crew getting a little bit of work done. Looks like a carburetor change taking place for Billy Dunn. How you doing, Billy? And again, this was, uh, geez, almost 12 years ago now at this point. So Bobby Varon uh, running for Kenny Saya then, the commercial roofing and sheet metal, number 10. And there's Billy Dunn, and I think that's Jordan McCready. Don't I may be wrong about that, but it sure does look like him, doesn't it, guys? Not positive. Justin Harris, of course, a longtime runner out at uh, Rolling Wheels Raceway. Pat Ward. Of course, Pat will be doing some different things this summer. I understand he'll be driving the 121 car at various times, the Joe B.A. car. Ryan Phelps had a lot of success at Rolling Wheels over the years. We caught up with him just a little while ago. Actually, I'm going to turn it up just a little bit here so you can see him a little bit better. And uh, But Ryan Phelps, uh, search and you'll find him on there. Uh, Dan Vauder, who I ran into this year when I went down to Afton. He's still racing, and his family's still running the go-kart. There's Scooby again, Rick Laubach. We just saw him in our bin from Big Diamond Raceway. And there's Brett Hearn getting ready to come on down and have some fun. Gary Tompkins doing a little work. Not sure if they're doing graphics or what they were doing at that point. Obviously, this was Tommy Sears' Syracuse car. You can see where the filler is, and it's taped up at that point. Uh, this, I believe, is a, this is Tim Sears. I believe it was Tim that was still running. I don't think it was Junior at that point just yet. And there's Tommy Sears. We just caught up with him the other day. I hope you had a chance to to check that out. And there's Timmer underneath the car getting a little bit of work done. Not sure, again, if he was the driver at that point or not. Ricky Newton down here at Familiar 11N. There is Chad Phelps and the Familiar X car. Still running that today. There's the brothers Donath, Shane, and Sean. Shane is on the left. They were driving for Kurt Prevo then. And here's the Holman family. How you doing, Mary Lou? And here's one with the Hiles. Rob and Chris. Rob is on the right. Chris is on the left. And Rob did his share of driving uh, for a while there as well. Bubba! Frank Brunel, ready to have some fun. Boy, you can tell it's the end of the season, huh? Just look at that body, huh? <laughs> it's seen a few races at this point. Uh, Nick Rizzo. Boy, look at those arms. Whoa, Nick. Been twisted some wrenches, I guess, at this point. So, uh, always nice to see everybody. I can't remember this gentleman's name, but he ran Weedsport Weekly, and I'm sorry about that. So, um, lots of fun. Dave Manise getting teased here a little bit as well. So, always a smile on his face. Ronnie Hawker is back. That's his number 14. He's going to run. He's running a hobby stock. Ricky Bree was out at Rolling Wheels on this particular day, too. And it looked like a really, really, really nice day out there. So lots of stock cars, as always. Kevin Boynton from down in Southern Tier made his way up. Of course, the Boynton family uh, synonymous with dirt racing down in the Southern Tier. Wayne Ellison won his share, won his share of races. Chris Fisher, regular runner at Outlaw for a long time. Woodhall also. Back with his number 37. Um, I can remember this, guys. Is it Lloyd Larman, maybe? Something like that. The 07. If you know, put it up there. But that's just the name that popped into my head uh, when I saw him here. And this, I wish I would have had the uh, number on the side. But obviously, somebody from up north, or excuse me, out to the west, uh, near Rochester, they got Tuscarora Trading Post on there. So, uh, actually, oh, that's Don Spaderico. It just came to me just now, that Don Spaderico. Matt Billings from up in Canada, from the Brockville area, went on to sprints after this. And there's Christine Martin, started racing as a teenager. She was primarily up to Can-Am most of the time. And there's Greg Kimball, pondering what to do. You can see the look. Remember that infamous uh, statue, the thinker? That's what uh, <laughs> Greg Kimball is doing right now. He's thinking about what to do, just like Todd Milton is here. And Todd, by the way, has a cool thing going on. I don't know if you had a chance to check it out, but look out Pine View Run Auto and Country Club and check that out. Todd Milton's doing that. It's his lifelong dream, and you guys are going to like it. So Tim Fuller and the Smith Brothers 74, and there he is, ready to go out and have some fun. Was always fast at uh, at Rolling Wheels. Brian Vivenzo, what's going on, man? You can see him at safety trucks all over the place as, uh, 
everybody was getting ready to go out and have some fun here at Rolling Wheels Raceway. Ronnie Johnson in the house. He would usually, at least back in, in 2009, would usually make the trip for all of those. And I wish I knew this guy's name. He took such good care of us. Um, he also ran the concession stand down in the infield at Syracuse. And the nice thing was there, for all of us who worked, you know, we didn't have time to wait in line. So we just kind of come in from like the press side, from the press center, and kind of lean in and grab his attention. He'd, he'd, what do you need? What do you need? And he'd take care of it for us because he knew we didn't have time to wait in line. We were working. And at Syracuse, as you guys know for officials, trying to find something to eat was, was not easy. And you certainly didn't want to eat that food from underneath the grandstand because that was farmed out. You know, the, the Syracuse the people didn't do that. That was a concession deal, a separate company. So uh, quality was not always, uh, you know, the best. Uh, for those particular deals right there. And obviously, there's the end of the night. Rolling Wheels did have its share of serious crashes. The Clavin Industry ride, this is Mike Bowman's number 16. And obviously, this car has seen better days. And from the look of it right there, that's probably the last time that 2009 McNell car uh, made its way out onto the racetrack. There was one time they had a really big crash on the back stretch. I'm not sure if this was that particular one or not. You can see Ryan Phelps was involved in this too. But uh, a bad crash at Rolling Wheels was uh, something that would happen a lot over there. And there you see uh, this is Bowman's car again as they're trying to get that into the pit area. And um, I don't know why I took that picture there, but uh, maybe just because I like seeing the headers on the car. Michael Storms was driving the four-star entry for Vinny Salerno back then. They were involved in this crash as well. And you can see that car is pretty darn torn up as... Uh, Michael Storms had himself a tough night at the racetrack. Look at that, right? Look how twisted that is. That is going to be a problem later. So that T.O. car might have raced its last night. But again, look at the cage. The cage is fine and dandy, and that's why we like this form of racing. And, and look at that. Something got through that cage. So he's fortunate that he didn't get something in the shoulder. And this is uh, something I used to do on the Doug's Dirt Diary days. Uh, let's see, who ended up winning this race? Brett Hearn. Ended up winning this race with Billy Decker, Steve Payne, Bobby Varin, and Jeff Brownell rounding out the top five. And I used to do that. I used to take pictures of the heat races. So that way people could see who won the heat races. These are the uh, sportsman cars right here. Oh, so that was Tim Sears Jr. I can see it right there. And there's the Modifieds. I hope you guys like this. Uh, we put up a couple of them for you here today. We'll be back tomorrow. We're supposed to hit a, hit a shop tomorrow on Wednesday afternoon. So look for that to come up, and uh, if all goes well, I might come back in time to do another one of these. So hit the blue E down there, guys. That'll subscribe you. And every time we're doing something cool, hope you all are doing well, and we'll see you soon.